Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that we can be together tonight. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love one another, okay? We love that you have a hope and a future for each of us, and it's good, and it's good. The plan is to do us no harm, Lord. I'm reminded of the times that I have taught at retreat about we, don't, we just do not see what's on the other side of that mountain. We don't. And we don't know if God's going to take us over, around, or through it. <laughs> but he definitely has a plan to get us to the other side. And there is no question about it. So, Lord, we yield to you. I ask you, Lord, please, one more time, let the mantle of teacher come and rest on me. Enable me to be accurate and clear and plain with what it is that you have put on my heart for tonight. Lord, I was, I was planning to go in a completely different direction, and you just clearly brought me back to the absolute cornerstone of thanksgiving and why it is that we do what we do. So, Lord, please let your anointing be strong, powerful, and open our hearts to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, the name of this lesson is be thankful. Be thankful. As we begin the series on hope for the holidays. You know what? I don't have to tell those of you in this room. I don't have to tell those of you who would be watching me um, in whatever media format because you all know that this is being birthed out of hope for hurting women. So we all know that there are challenges. We are either hurting or we have a heart for people who are hurting. And the truth of it is that is exacerbated, it, that is made even stronger during the holiday season. Yeah. And that's true. It's like everything comes into some sort of a pressure cooker, exactly. There's a whole story about that that I'm not gonna tell you. Yeah, okay. And like it comes into a pressure cooker. And um, so I, I want us to just begin by remembering what our theme scripture is for help for hurting women, for the walls of our heart. Second Corinthians 1, 3 and 4, okay? Team members, you better have this <laughs> emblazoned on your hearts by this time, right? Yeah. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Pray, we praise him, amen? We praise him. He's the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can give that same comfort to others that we've received from God. Amen? It, it is emblazoned on our hearts. It is tattooed on our spirits. And whenever you feel that you are floundering, failing, hurting, take yourself, yourself back to that touchstone, to that cornerstone. No matter what the trouble you might be feeling, He's the God of all comfort, amen? And he wants to minister to you so that he can minister through you. So we all understand the holidays can be trouble. They can. And part of that, I know, it comes historically from unrealistic expectations. Now, our expectations in a lot of ways have been shattered starting in 2020 because of COVID. Right? I, I watched some news today and I was like, I don't even want to hear this. I, I, Austria is locked down. Germany is locking down. I mean, people in Europe are, there were tens of thousands of people demonstrating in the street in Brussels today because of, of lockdowns and, and programs and methods. And, the, and everyone is so frustrated. They're so frustrated, but even within, when it is the best we can, and, and none of these challenges, we can still end up with unrealistic expectations related to the holidays, right? Um, listen, if, if, you, if you watch the commercials, 
and they're a little better yeah. after the couple of years we've been through. But you're supposed to be happy. You're supposed to set the perfect table, okay? Cook the perfect meal and be with the perfect family. I ask this every time. How many of you in this room have a perfect family? Yeah, no hands, just so you're interested. Okay, one time a lady raised her hand and my response was liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> there is no such thing as a perfect family, right? And not the perfect table, it can look nice, okay? Not even the perfect meal, all right? But, but it's fueled by, by things around us that we see and we hear and our desires, okay? Um, so, uh, historically, I have to share it because y'all know I'm, I'm a tradition person. And uh, years ago, I was looking at this picture that I gave you all. Okay, I'm going to hold it up. Okay. This is Norman Rockwell's Freedom from Want. That's the title of this picture, Freedom from Want. It was, um, it appeared in the Saturday Evening Post in 1943. So it was years ago that I was looking at this. And I want you to know that this is so famous that this has appeared on the public's wrapping for their turkeys a few years ago. I walked in, I was like, are you kidding me? Okay, <laughs> this very picture is on the turkeys? That's how famous it is, okay. But God literally spoke to my heart, those of you who've been with me through this before, and he said, Connie, what's wrong with this picture? You know, famous line, what's wrong with this picture, right? And I've shared with you, oh, by my estimation, there are lots of things wrong with this picture. There's no coffee, for starters. <laughs> that is drastically wrong, okay. There are no sides that I see except for grapes and whatever those are, and celery, seriously, right? And it, yeah, there's no cranberry sauce, come on. There's no corn casserole, there's no, you know, there's no, I mean mashed potatoes, dressing, and tons of gravy, right? Yeah. You, you, you get the picture, right? You, and, and always, it's like, how in the world do you carve a turkey at the table and not make a total mess? I mean, seriously, this is all completely serious. So I'm looking at it, and, and the Lord, and I, I'm saying, I know what's wrong with this picture, Lord, it's too perfect. And he said, exactly, it's too perfect. Now, even the reality of this picture is that World War II was from September 1 of 1939 to September 2 of 1945. He published this picture right in the middle of the war. Right in the middle of the war when people were desperately hurting. They were desperately hurting. Um, I, I read an article um, some years ago regarding this. And it literally said, the iconic Rockwell painting shows ideal America. Rockwell's heart was, I paint life as I would like it to be. As I would like it to be. And you know, even, even if you look at, at all of these smiling people, you might notice at the bottom, there is a guy who's actually looking at you, right? Do you see that? He's actually looking at you as if to say, seriously? <laughs> I mean, isn't this all a bit much, right? Okay, so um, it just, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because it brings it into perspective that reality is things are not perfect. They're not perfect, okay? Uh, one of the things I'm gonna share with you in a couple of weeks is, is the teaching that I've done in years past. One of the teachings was perfect plans. We make our plans, we think they're perfect, and God's like, watch this, right? Really, 
I mean, really. The reality is that there, we deal with some huge stress issues. The reality is that we deal with brokenness. Brokenness in our lives, in our hearts, in our homes, marriages, lives, dreams, relationships. That's reality. That is reality. That's why we do the ministry that we do as we have done it for years. And I will trust that God will continue to work in hearts in which this has been sown for 30 years. You know, 2020 was just, uh, the 2020, the year of COVID, when COVID began in the spring of 2020, it was, every day, it was like another shock. You know, every day, another loss. Every day, another point of confusion, right? Every day, another possibility of brokenness. You know, when we think about holidays in our lives, we have memories. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, right? Sometimes um, the good memories even make us hurt because we don't have it anymore, right? Um, I got a picture this week of my great grandbaby. <laughs> it was her four month old picture and she's laying down on a round piece of cloth with little leaves around her and uh, she's wearing a onesie that has turkeys on it, right? <laughs> with little turkey shoes, okay? And, um, and uh, Megan, my granddaughter, posted and she said, um, so excited for four months with our little turkey. <laughs> I mean, those are wonderful memories. Those are wonderful memories and wonderful things happening. But at the same time that birth is happening, loss is happening. Um, I've interacted with so many people recently who have lost loved ones. Uh, I think this past weekend there were two memorials at First Assembly. For a long time, people who had been involved a long time. Um, resources, for some of us, resources are there. For some of us, resources are not there. For some of us, we're trusting God for the resources to continue. It's not perfect. And then we have the, the reality, the true reality, that we are an exceedingly mobile society, okay? And um, I don't even have to ask you to raise your hands because I look around this room and I know every single one of you has loved ones who are not here. Loved ones who are not here. And, and you miss them. And you wish that you could be with them. And, and it's, the separation is difficult. It's difficult. I am a traditionalist. Listen to me. I love tradition. I love tradition. Um, I will watch A Wonderful Life. And just in case you're interested, I did notice it's already available <laughs> on TV programs. Usually it doesn't happen until we get to about Christmas Eve, right? I will watch It's a Wonderful Life. If I watch it all by myself, I'm going to be watching it. We will have stockings. Are we all grown? Yes, we are, but we will have stockings. Uh, there will be certain foods, and no, Linda, it will not be kale salad. Thank you very much, because that is not tradition, not in my house, right? Okay. But then, as my mother began to age, who was the consummate cook, and she was the one who always made pretty close to the perfect Thanksgiving table, as she began to fail and fail and fail, then in 2017, for the first time, we went to a restaurant for Thanksgiving. And that was hard, but we just, we just need to trust God that, that even if, yeah, that through it all, he's faithful, and that even though it's not perfect, it can still be good right? It can still be good. It's not flawless by any means, but it can still be good. Um, and the Lord will help us to bring things into proper perspective if we'll let him, if we will let him, okay? Because the Lord has a plan 
for our holiday season that to us may not seem perfect, not in any way, not even close to it, but it will be good because it will be coming from his heart. The life of Christ within us will help us to see more clearly. Be reminded of Ephesians 1.18, Ephesians 1.18 from the Amplified, because it helps to bring things into proper perspective. Ephesians 1.18, and I pray, Paul writes to the church, and I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened. Amen. The eyes of our heart flooded with light by the Holy Spirit so that you will know, listen to this, you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints in the saints there is power in connectivity amen and i'm saying to you in here i'm saying to you we need to be proactive in that we need to be proactive in being connected to and we get, we're here from different churches so i'm saying connected to the church the church the ecclesia we are family amen and we are blessed to have one another and the lord will get give us light you have to have light to see right you have to and he will enlighten our hearts so that we can see we can get his perspective second corinthians 4 for second corinthians 4 16 through 18 from the message so we're not giving up how could we even though on the outside it often looked like looks like things are falling apart on us <laughs> isn't that something even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us on the inside where god is making new life not a day goes by without his unfolding grace these hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we are now, the things we see now are here today and they're gone tomorrow. Here today and gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. Amen? They will last forever. And Ephesians 2, 6, Ephesians 2, 6, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. You know the perspective is different from there. Can you say amen? You know it is. So proper perspective. Why do we do Christmas? We know why we do Christmas. We're celebrating Jesus Christ, the birth of the Messiah, the birth of our Savior. Amen? Celebrating. We know why we do that. But what we're talking about tonight is why do we do Thanksgiving? Why do we do it? I want to remind you that although we're celebrating a holiday, Thanksgiving is a verb. Okay, giving thanks, right? We celebrate it like a noun, okay? A holiday, Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving is a verb. There's action to it. Why Thanksgiving? <laughs> to thank the Lord for Jesus Christ, to thank him for our salvation, to thank him for our blessings, for his keeping power, for his love, amen? for so much and to thank him for those who are special in our lives. Be proactive with this, okay? When I am in the week of Thanksgiving, I try to be proactive in thanking people that I normally wouldn't thank on a daily basis because there are lots of people that I thank regularly, but being proactive 
to thank people who are in our lives. Most important though, the reason that we celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday in America is to thank the Lord for our heritage of our religious freedom in America. Can you say amen? Yeah, go ahead. Give him praise. To thank the Lord for our heritage of our religious freedom in America. So Thanksgiving, a spirit of gratitude, just a spirit of gratitude. Let it permeate our minds and our hearts and our lives in these days. It is our oldest American national holiday. It's the oldest. I said to you in times past, the date is not sacred. It's been switched around through the years from the beginning. Now it is the fourth Thursday in November. And it has been that way ever since 1941. I've shared with you uh, a few fun facts, right? Uh, Thanksgiving was proclaimed a national holiday by President Abraham Lincoln in 1863, okay? In 1839, President Franklin Roosevelt moved the holiday forward one week to the day we celebrate the fourth Thursday in November. So it's been moved around a little bit. Some of you may or may not know, fun fact, Sarah Hale, who wrote Mary Had a Little Lamb, she's considered the mother of our Thanksgiving celebration after she urged President Lincoln to make the day a national holiday. Yay, Sarah. Amen? Yay, Sarah. How many of you know Mary Had a Little Lamb? Yeah. Amen. 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 Okay, according to a survey by the National Turkey Foundation, 95% of Americans really do eat turkey on Thanksgiving, which says to me there are a whole lot of vegetarians who must cheat. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, they become turkey-tarians or something, right? Okay. 50 million, that's the estimated number of pumpkin pies that are eaten on Thanksgiving. Yay! This is go I'm going to someone's home and she said, is it really important to have pumpkin pie? Yeah. Yes! Uh, yes! Okay, and the average weight of a turkey purchased for a Thanksgiving meal is 15 pounds, adding up to about 675 pounds million pounds of turkey consumed that day in the United States. Can you say yippee? Amen? Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, all those turkeys running around with all those chickens. Yeah. In heaven. Yeah. Okay. So let me share with you uh, reminders. These are reminders. How did this begin? How did this begin? All right, this comes from David Barton, David Barton. The pilgrims left England on September 6th of 1620, and for two months they braved the harsh elements of a storm-tossed sea. Think about this. September they left England. September in the North Atlantic. I mean, it's like, it's like, Crazy, right? Okay. 102 of them left, and 103 arrived in America because a baby was born, and he was named Oceanus. An appropriate name, don't you think? Yes. Okay. After disembarking at Plymouth Rock, they had a prayer service, and they began building hasty shelters, but unprepared for harsh New England winter, nearly half of them died before spring. Winters were just not like that in England. England, surrounded all around by the ocean, was tempered. They were not prepared. Yet persevering in prayer and assisted by helpful Indians, they reaped a bountiful harvest the following summer. And the grateful pilgrims then declared a three-day feast 
in December of 1621 to thank God and to celebrate with their Indian friends America's first Thanksgiving festival. Now think of this. This is 1621. Most of them were widows, widowers. They'd lost, many of them were orphans. Many of them had lost their children. 50% of them had not survived that winter, and yet they celebrated. They thanked God. They gave thanks. It just, it astonishes me. And this began the tradition in New England colonies that slowly spread into other colonies through the years. That was in 1621, the first. Now the year is 1623, and the pilgrims had been in the New World for two and a half years. The first Thanksgiving of 1621 was only a memory by this time because this summer's drought was jeopardizing everything. Not even the Indians could remember anything like it. The settlers had planted more corn than before, but without any rainfall, there would be no harvest. Daily they had prayed that God would send rain, but he had not answered. And as the psalmist did in Psalm 141, verse 1, Psalm 141, verse 1, they were begging God to hurry. It says, O oh Lord, I'm calling to you, please hurry. How many of you have ever prayed a prayer like that? Please hurry. Listen when I cry to you for help. Accept my prayer as incense offered to you and my upraised hands as an evening offering. Finally, the settlers set aside an entire day for prayer and for worship. And as they went for worship, the heavens were as clear and the drought as like to continue as it ever was. Yet when they left their meeting, the weather was overcast and the clouds gathered on all sides. And for the next 14 days, there were moderate showers of rain, according to Edward Winslow, who was one of the pilgrims. The Indians watched and they were amazed at how the God of the new settlers had answered their prayers. And that year, after the harvest, a second Thanksgiving was celebrated with the Indians joining in as well. Isn't that awesome? Just absolutely awesome. Then we go to the 1700s, considering our country was birthed July 4th, 1776. We go to the 1700s, listen to the writing of Samuel Adams and Richard Henry Lee, those of you who studied your American history, all of these names are going to be familiar to you. Do not allow yourself to be deceived by revisionist history. This is true. This is historical. Continental Congress, 1776. Congress recommends a day of thanksgiving and praise so that the people may express the grateful feelings of their hearts and join their prayers that it may please God through the merits of Jesus Christ to forgive our sins and to enlarge his kingdom, which consists in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Thomas Jefferson in 1779, who was then Governor Thomas Jefferson, I appoint a day of public thanksgiving to Almighty God to ask him that he would pour out his Holy Spirit on all ministers of the gospel, Amen. 
that he would spread the light of Christian knowledge through the remotest corners of the earth and that he would establish these United States upon the basis of religion and virtue. Amen. 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 Give him praise. Amen. Every time I read these, it gives me chills, honestly. John Hancock, biggest signature, right? John Hancock, who was governor in 1799, 1790. I appoint a day of public thanksgiving and praise to render to God the tribute of praise for his unmerited goodness toward us by giving to us the holy scriptures which are able to enlighten and make us wise to eternal salvation and to pray that he would forgive our sins and cause the religion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be known, understood, and practiced among all the people of the earth. Amen? Amen and amen and amen. It's just, it is absolutely amazing to me. So then we move into the 1800s. The 1800s. And I, and I want to read something to you. This is entitled from Christian Life Times, Thanksgiving and Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln's original 1863 Thanksgiving proclamation, which we will read in a while, okay, came spiritually speaking at a pivotal point in his life. During the first week of July of that year, all right, so he brought the proclamation in November, right, of 1863. During the first week of July of that year, the Battle of Gettysburg occurred, resulting in the loss of some 60,000 American lives. Four months later, in November, Lincoln delivered his famous Gettysburg Address. It was while Lincoln was walking among the thousands of graves there at Gettysburg that he committed his life to Christ. Now that speaks volumes to me of how God can step into the middle of loss. As he explained to a friend, when I left Springfield to assume the presidency, I asked the people to pray for me. I was not a Christian. When I buried my son, the severest trial of my life, I was not a Christian. But when I went to Gettysburg and I saw the graves of thousands of our soldiers, I then and there consecrated myself to Christ. Think about that. Four months after consecrating himself to Christ, he wrote the 1863 Thanksgiving Proclamation. There have been proclamations through the years by President since then. None of them touches my heart the way this one does. And every time I read it, it brings me to tears. And that probably will happen again right now. I have given it to you. For those of you who will be um, getting this at a later time, this is absolutely available to you online. It is Abraham Lincoln's Thanksgiving Proclamation from 1863. October 3, 1863. It is the duty of nations, as well as of men, to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God, to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon. Amen? and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations are blessed whose God is the Lord. Amen. We know that by His divine law, nations like individuals 
are subjected to punishments and chastisements in this world. May we not justly fear that the awful calamity of civil war, which now desolates the land, may be a punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins to the needful end of our national reformation as a whole people? We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. And intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace. And too proud to pray to the God that made us. It has seemed fit to me and proper that God should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and all those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Can you say amen? Amen and amen. I encourage you, I encourage you on Thanksgiving to read it. Read it, remember it, thank God, thank God. And just think about how God used a man four months after giving his heart to the Lord. Sometimes we discount what we can do. I mean, God, that just, just consider it. Just think about it. And that launched the annual National Thanksgiving Observance, which we celebrate to this day. Amen? Amen. Now, Abraham Lincoln also wrote this. Sorrow comes to all. And perfect relief is not possible except with time. We allow God to work in the time to bring perfect relief. Sometimes you cannot now realize that you will ever feel better, and yet you are sure to be happy again. Abraham Lincoln. Powerful words. Amen? Powerful words. So, <laughs> we will in time, no matter what's going on, be happy again. How? We have to be thankful. Yes. Be thankful. Yes. Acts 17.28. Acts 17.28 says that we live and move and have our being yes. in him. We live and move and have our being in him. We have to be thankful by choice. That's right. You've heard me say it a thousand times. It'll ring in your ears forever. You have to praise on purpose. You have to praise on purpose. The less you feel like it, the more you have to do it in order to make your way through. You just absolutely must. First Chronicles, First Chronicles 16, 34, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, right? And his faithful love endures how long? Forever. Forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. One translation says, his faithful love endures how long? Forever. 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 
Psalm 150, 1 through 6 from the Amplified. Psalm 150, 1 through 6 from the Amplified. <laughs> it's the appropriate time to ask, are you breathing? Answer me. Yes. Are you breathing? Yes. You're breathing. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the abundance of his greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harps and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and the flute. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The Amplified says, let everything that has breath and every breath of life praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you shout it? Praise the Lord. Praise. The, it takes breath. It takes breath. Listen to it from the Passion Translation. Um, no, this will be, let me read Psalm 100 to you. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Did, uh, you know, we keep looking for places in here where it says when you feel like it. <laughs> right? No. This is writ at, written absolutely in the imperative tense. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We're his. We're his people. We're the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, giving thanks, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. Oh, and here it is again. And his love endures forever. Listen to this. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Through all generations. From the Passion Translation, Psalm 100. Passion Translation. Lift up a great shout of joy to the Lord. Go ahead. Do it. Everyone. Everywhere. As you serve him, be glad and worship him. Sing your way into his presence wow. with joy. And realize what this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping the Lord our God. For he is our creator and we belong to him. We are the people, listen to this, of his pleasure. We are the people of his pleasure. You can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. Oh, we know all about passwords, right? How many of you have ever forgotten a password? Right? Ah! You don't ever have to forget this one. You never will forget this one. We can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. Come, bring your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. For the Lord is always good and ready to receive you. He's so loving, it will amaze you, and so kind that it will astound you. And he's famous for his faithfulness toward all. Everyone knows our God can be trusted for he keeps his promises yes. to every generation. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. amen? amen. amen. I want you to know God has a place at the table for you. Amen. He's got a place at the table, the dining room table, the Thanksgiving table. He's got a place at the table for you. I always remember Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames when we did it. And uh, <laughs> the one fellow who was going into heaven and he loved to eat. He was always the one who loved to eat. And he would run in, okay, and he would come back out and he would say, 
you don't want to miss it. Amen? You don't want to miss it. There's a place at his dining table for you, for you, for you, for me, for me. That Thanksgiving table, that feast, that marriage supper, it awaits us in heaven and it will be perfect. Amen. But the word of God even tells us that here, he sets a place for us in the wilderness. Sometimes we feel like we're there. There's a place in the wilderness. Sometimes it's a place in the presence of our enemies. And he anoints us and he meets us at that place. I just want to say to you, Thanksgiving is a verb. It's a verb. And the first thing for which we need to thank, give thanks, is for our Lord and Savior, yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you would bow your heads. I know those, uh, those of you sitting in this room. I know you. I know your lives. I know you're born again. I don't know everyone listening to me. And I am saying, listen to me. This is your opportunity. This is your moment to do exactly what Abraham Lincoln did. Doesn't matter the hurt, doesn't matter the loss, doesn't matter the pain, doesn't matter the guilt, doesn't matter what you've done or not done. He is ready for you. He is ready for you. We're talking about the holidays. It's time to make your heart a Bethlehem. Let his life be born in you at this moment. Don't let one more moment pass. Get this settled right now because this moment is all you have. Would you all just repeat after me? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now and we know we need a savior we need you jesus we thank you jesus you came to this earth you lived a sinless life you died for our sins but it did not end there you are alive and because you are alive i'm alive Jesus, Jesus, continue to live in me, live your, in life me. In me. your life in me, and your life through me. I am born again, I am yours, and you are mine. You are Lord of my life, for now and forevermore. And Lord God, would you help us to draw others to you, as they see our thankfulness the same way that the Indians were drawn to the pilgrims as they saw their thankfulness as they saw their hearts even in the midst of their need and you were so faithful and you will be still we love you Lord we thank you Lord we thank you for America. We thank you for the religious freedom that we have. And we celebrate you. Not just this Thanksgiving, but every moment of every day. In Jesus' name. Now let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us this time. Thank you, God, that we're going to go from this place and people are going to go from watching with a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing of praise, a fresh anointing to praise on purpose, a fresh anointing to make thanksgiving a verb, an action word in their lives. Lord, I ask you to bless those who are in here tonight. Take them home, Lord, with huge angels on guard round about them. And God, I pray that this Thanksgiving, 
they will sense such an anointing, such a presence of your spirit, unlike anything that they have ever experienced before. They might be with people they love. They might be serving people in need. They might be absolutely alone, just making their table with you, wherever it is. I just ask you, God, that your spirit would be so strong upon them, in them, for them, and through them, in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Can you stand up and just give him praise? Just praise him. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We just praise you. We give you thanksgiving, Lord. Come on. Open your mouths. Open your mouths in thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We just thank you and praise you. Amen. Amen.